days today. We're gonna go uh, investigate Alcatraz. Hey. It's gonna be exciting. Hello everybody, welcome back to Supernatural Eye. I'm your main host and lead investigator, Francesca Garcia. I'm really excited to announce we're finally here to discuss the one, the only, the infamous Alcatraz Federal Prison. That's right, we are here to discuss Alcatraz. Um, as you already know, I've been having technical difficulties for the past two months trying to recover my data, and I do have some sad news to announce that the videos are not recoverable as of right now. Um, just recently I thought they were and I got my files back from driver's, sa uh, driver's data or whatever, savers, I meant to say, um, that is the company that was working on my laptop, uh, driver savers, I meant to say, sorry if I got that wrong. But anyways, um, I played the videos and they still were recoverable so they're looking into it again. Um, as of right now we have a deadline and the show must go on so we will just show what we have. Uh, we have some good EVPs coming up and some exciting photos to share. Um, I do apologize for the inconvenience. Um, I'm really sad because I know this episode could have, you know, been so much more. But as of right now, it is still as good. It is Alcatraz and hey, you can't go wrong with that. So in the event, if Driver Savers was able to recover my data, then of course I will show it to you guys. I'll do like a part two section. Um, but for now, the show must go on. And we do have some really cool EVP captures I do want to share. So we'll give you some of that fire. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and go on and discuss a um, little bit of a brief history. I'm not going to get into detail with the history of Alcatraz because obviously you guys already know Alcatraz as it is. But we'll discuss a little bit of that and then um, the cast who is on it and the year that we went. So obviously the main topic of this episode is the rock Alcatraz. I might actually rock in the boys out here if you can tell. Um, the infamous inmates of that you heard of is obviously Robert Stroud, which is the Birdman, which is this guy over here. Ooh, I don't know if you can see him. That's him right here. Um, you got Mr. Al Capone. Everybody knows who Al Capone is. And then Machine Gun Kelly. And no, I am not talking about the rapper. Okay, that's probably where he got his inspiration from. We are talking about Mr. George. So um, these are the three that you hear of the most, but obviously there's a lot of infamous inmates and they're known to be the notorious, the most notorious, the baddest of them all. Um, you do bad in prison, you go to Alcatraz, in other words. That's where you get shipped out to. So it is an island, in other words, the inescapable island. Uh, so that's why it's called The Rock. Um, the members that were on this investigation with me, this adventure, it was myself, my cousin Monica, and her husband, Nando. Uh, we went during July, I believe it's either 15 or 17. Um, I could have sworn it was the 15th, but all my videos said the 17th, so whatever. But it was during 2015, um, and we had a blast. So there's a lot to share, but before we get to that, I want to give you a little bit of a brief history of Alcatraz itself. All right then, so Alcatraz operated as a federal prison um, starting from August 1934 to March of 1963. Um, it's been a military fort since 1850. It was discovered by the Spanish and rumor has it that uh, the Indians and Native Americans back in the days uh, used to call it Evil Island and they were scared to even venture off on that island. So the first prison building uh, was built from 1910 or operated from 1910 to 1912 and it was used for a military prison um, and then became a federal prison in 1934 uh, which the prison then expanded and it's known as the infamous prison of what you see nowadays as Alcatraz. 
So during its prime, Alcatraz had the most infamous rumors and it just known to be the most notorious prison. Again, the worst of the worst inmates got shipped out to Alcatraz. Um, you heard about the infamous prison riots between the inmates and the prisoners. Uh, that was really huge. Um, also, the three escapees that escaped from the island, which is a mystery. Did they survive or did they not survive? Um, just a lot of mysteries to the island. Um, also, the most notorious, they say the most haunted cell or prison cell is in Alcatraz, which is cell block D or 14D. Um, later on, we will discuss my EV, uh, EVP captures captured in that cell block and it is very, very active and that's all I can tell you. We'll discuss that later on. Um, but rumor has it that there was a prisoner um, that was in that cell and pretty much was yelling at the prison guards that there was somebody in there with him, uh, screaming on the top of his lungs to get him out, that there was somebody there with him. Obviously, the prisoner, or sorry, the prisoner, the um, guard, prison guard, um, looked at him like he was crazy, like if, you know, just trying to find an excuse to get out, in other words, or who knows what, didn't believe him, left him in there. Uh, the very next day, they found him dead, and he was strangled had markings on his neck and it was just mind-boggling to them because they could not figure out who was in that cell with him and how did he end up passing away with these strangulation marks um even the before the inmate died that he the rumor has it that he saw some red glowing eyes and this demon was trying to haunt him and, and kill him in other words so they possibly said hey this could be true um so they say that is the most active cell is 14D and cell block D. Due to poor building maintenance and poor funding, the notorious Alcatraz prison uh, closed in 1960, uh, 1963 um, and relocated its prisoners to other prisons in the United States. Um, again, this prison has a notorious reputation. I don't even have to tell you much detail about it as you guys probably already heard of it. And if you have not heard of Alcatraz, I am very shocked that you have not heard of Alcatraz. Maybe you got to do some research. Um, but let's discuss our experience. And again, my crew members that were on this uh, adventure with me was my cousin Monica and her husband Nando. Nando is more, I would say, the skeptic out of the group. And he was more interested in the audio tour. So he kind of ventured off his own way to the audio tour. Um, again, I wish I could show you my videos. I'm not going to harp on the video situation, but you would have seen that. Um, my cousin was kind of curious. Um, I mean, they both were curious about the equipment that I was using. And finally, that was the first time I was able to kind of venture out as the investigator and use my equipment. So obviously I can't show you the videos, but I did have my infrared GoPro. And then you'll see that in some of my photos here. Um, I had my EMF meter. I did have my dowsing rods, even though I don't really use them, um, especially not in Alcatraz. I do use them at a different investigation, but that's later on in the show. Um, and we just kind of venture our way to Alcatraz. Um, I'm going to show you some EVP captures. The majority of them were captured again in uh, cell block D14. Um, Alcatraz is a very hard prison to investigate. So the state rangers that were there were kind enough to let me investigate for at least 30 minutes and guided me to areas where um, other, you know, people were around um, doing their thing. So they were very nice to let me have my alone time and do my EVP sessions um, in that cell. So um, pretty much my cousin and I we were walking towards the cell and I think I'm gonna show you this little EVP clip because I think it's hilarious. Um, but my cousin ended up leaving me because she got really, really scared. Uh, mind you, her husband was not in that area. He just went and ventured off with the other, um, you know, people that were in that crew or not in my crew, but they're just doing the audio tour. Um, so she literally took off and left me by myself and I guess that's part of the experience, but I'm going to show you that little clip so you know I'm not BSing you. So let's go ahead and let me show you her leaving me real quick. All right, we're recording here in Alcatraz. We're in solitary number 13. Anyone here? Seven right now. Go 
going to 14. Monica? Monica? Now we're on 14. So yeah, I was left alone, but that's okay. That's part of it. So now you know that what I'm gonna capture and what I'm gonna show you here shortly, I mind you, I was by myself. Nobody was around. Um, I had access to 30 minutes by myself in the cell, solitary. It was pitch black, like literally it was dark. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna show you that clip real quick. So here we go. In solitary number 13. So what I'm thinking they're saying is, or what the inmate, I believe it's an inmate, Sounds like a male for sure, but what I'm thinking he's saying is you can have her. So again, you can have her, um, or you can't have her. At first I thought it was can't, but then I heard can. So I'm gonna play it again for you guys and tell me what your thoughts are of it. Comment below, um, but again, here it goes. So let me know your thoughts. In solitary number 13. Right, super creepy. Um, and again, mind you, I'm by myself. So this would have been captured on camera but hopefully if it does get recovered again, um, I'll show you that. But if not, then this is what it is. Um, there's another EVP capture I wanna show you, but this was definitely uh, my little class, a EVP that you can definitely make out what it's saying. Um, sometimes it, it's a can or a can, so maybe um, people consider it class B, but to me it's very distinct that you can understand what it's saying. Um, so here is another EVP clip. Let me know your thoughts. Here we go. In solitary number 13. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, and again, I'm dying to go back definitely it's on my bucket list again because i have to go back uh, especially what happened with driver savers it's just not the same the one thing i definitely want to discuss um those were my captures but definitely it was so active that's something i want to talk about attachments in other words things that can attach to you you got to be very careful when you do these type of investigations and not taunt any entities um, my thing, it wasn't captured obviously on my rec recorder or my devices, but I was kind of antagonizing and taunting a little bit around trying to see if I can get some activity stirred up. And surely enough, I did um, so much for the fact that I had an attachment come back with me. And I believe it was the voice of what you heard on my EVPs. Um, not to get into detail because some things are kind of personal, but um, definitely I've had some really bad night terrors and nightmares and um, I would say for a good week it was just reoccurring and um, I believe my personal attachment my I think he's some type of guardian angel um, I call him Charles I believe he kind of worked his little magic around and kind of booted this entity out of the way but I do believe this inmate did attach to me um, for me kind of just being a dumbass and taunting it around so I guess um, I kind of did deserve it, but you have to be very careful, um, especially for you new investigators out there. You definitely don't want to do a taunting method. Um, definitely, it's just disrespectful. Obviously, if you know it's a bad entity or spirit, then go ahead by all means. Um, but if if you're just if that's your method, then you're just kind of a jerk. But definitely, just be careful when you're taunting around because things can definitely get attached. 
for some reason you're experiencing some type of an attachment or haunting and you're trying to get rid of it um, and don't know how, um, please contact me. You can definitely message me um, and I can find you resources and ways of who to contact and how to get rid of this type of entity or attachment. Um, so yeah, just be very careful when you do these type of things. Um, again, so this is what we have to share for the Alcatraz episode, and I hope you guys like it. Um, now I'm going to pass this segment on to Danny Sabletta. Um, This will be his last um, episode um, as the interviewer. We will be looking for new interviewers, so stay tuned on that. But I'm very sad to announce that uh, Danny has worked so hard in these past episodes, and we wish him nothing but the best for his future endeavors. Um, so thank you, Danny, and we love you, we support you, and hope for nothing but the best in your future. Um, so give a big shout out to Danny and we'll pass this segment along to him. So thank you again for watching Supernatural Eye. My name is Frances Garcia and stay tuned for episode five. We'll be hitting up Denver, Colorado. That is right, Denver, Colorado. I'm not gonna give too much details, but stay tuned on the trailer and when it's coming out. So thank you guys again for watching Supernatural Eye. Have a good night, love you guys. Mwah. How are you doing today? I'm the host, Danny Zabaleta. I'm here assisting Francesca in Supernatural Eye and getting the uh, feedback from those who went with her to these trips. Today, I have the honor to interview Nando. He's uh, one of the people who accompanied Francesca to Alcatraz. Uh, it was a wonderful trip from what I hear. How are you doing today, Nando? Hey, man. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing great, doing great. Thank you for, so much for coming here on to this interview and, you know, giving me a chance to speak with you Absolutely. about, you know, everything you experienced in that trip. So I understand it was, oh, yeah, about, absolutely. Yeah. It was about seven years ago, you guys <laughs> went out to this investigation out to Alcatraz and I just got a few questions for you. And uh, if you can share your experience with us and with our viewers, um, during that experience, were you nervous entering Alcatraz? Uh, no, not really. Actually, I've, I've, before that experience, I've been in Alcatraz at least like three or four times. Really? So at the time I was dating my, yeah, I, I was dating my wife and, um, and she told me like, Hey, my, my cousin, she's coming and she really wants to go to Alcatraz. And then I'm like, Oh my God, this is awesome. Cause I, um, like every, I, I, yeah, I, I, I was there before and I like to do the tour and I've, I've watched the movies um about Alcatraz and Escape of Alcatraz of course so um it yeah I just I just saw it as an opportunity to oh my god let's go again and just you know just have fun right. um I know my wife at the time she said like hey um my cousin she's really into this and she liked to take her equipment which you know I started chatting with her before the trip and it was um uh, it was very interesting to see all the equipment that she had right. at the time and and how she was going to use it so it was a really nice trip for sure so so for you from what i'm gathering is most kind of like a just a good time trying something different you know getting to the perhaps just exploring understanding the history of it would you consider yourself a believer in paranormal activity or you're a skeptic um I don't know what you know i i wouldn't call myself a believer i'm not a skeptic because i'm sure um, I'm sure if 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 you try to dig a little bit more on this, um, you can definitely go you know a little deeper and 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 find things that are going to surprise you. In my case, um, um, it just you know it's I'm not I'm not into it. Uh, it's just um, for me at the time it was more like you know hey just see see how it is and and we'll take it from there. Um, right. I wouldn't call myself an skeptical. Um, right. but I'm definitely not a believer. I'm sort of like someone who just, um, sort of like it's, you know, is there and just wants to experience, you know, what's going on. And just, I was really intrigued at the time by the, uh, by the equipment that Francesca had, cause I, I didn't realize, well, I'm sure that I knew there was some sort of equipment, but I just didn't realize all the stuff that she had, which I found quite interesting. Now, given the fact that Francesca came out with that equipment, 
did it perhaps make you aware of different signals that the these devices were picking up and perhaps giving you a thought like, gee, there could really be something like you're saying, if there was further investigation with the right equipment to say, there is probably something here. I'll be honest with you. I, I think, I don't know how, like it, I was, I remember at the time I was kind of like questioning, I didn't say this out loud, but I was questioning the, you know, how accurate these devices were. Right. Okay. You know, I've seen, you know, I, I grew up in Colombia. So mm -hmm. I know when I was growing up, I, I met people that sort of like had that thing that could, you know, send, you know, different things. Right. Um, I, I don't know if you can call that, you know, uh, ghosts or, or whatever, or like, you know, souls just, just, just there. Uh, but you sort of like you grew up with, you know, sort of like, you know, like hearing hearing people that uh, had the ability to sense right. you know, the presence of, you know, others, others, other, you know, people or I wouldn't call people, but just other other things, I guess, around. Right. So so when I saw the equipment, it was more like as an engineer, I was just questioning like how, you know, how how accurate this thing is, right. like, how do you calibrate this equipment? Because it's hard to calibrate an equipment like this, right? You compare it against what, right? Right. So that's a very good point you make as far as the calibration to the equipment. Is it really set up to pick up the signals and how sensitive are the signals that it's receiving? But perhaps if mm -hmm. if you were to switch out this whole investigation, you know, forget the equipment or these devices, but do you think if you were to go with somebody who would consider themselves a medium? in the space and who would be able to pick up those uh, or be more sensitive or more receptive to these beings that are, or energies within Alcatraz, if there is a, a medium, for example, like you're referring to somebody who's able to do that, who has that ability to connect with those beings, if that were, that, that would be a person, would you feel different about the situation? Um, oh yeah, absolutely. And, and I've, um, you know, like when you think about Alcatraz, uh, Quite a lot of people, quite a lot of people have died there. Um, you know, I remember, you know, I took the tour several times. So it's been some, you know, some time ago, but I know, I know at least like four or five people committed suicide. Wow. I know other people got, got murdered there as well. So it was, you know, you have a lot of violent people, um, you know, confining to just, you know, that island. So, so yeah, you, you know, that was, you know, the island as a prison was, was operated for like 30 years or so. And a lot of things were going going on in there. So I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there are some souls, I guess if I could say that, that are not that they're not haven't been able to rest or, or just I don't know. I, I think I, I do believe in like sort of like the energy. And I think that plays because of all the the, the bad things I guess that happen inside could could have that negative energy just sort of like built sort of like in there sort of like it built through years right and it kind of like remained there because you know these people left you know without you know not not in a i guess not in a good way i remember yeah in one of the tours like people describing how people will you know got murdered there and that you know so like remember if i'm not incorrectly but i think like the first person like her uh his throat got you know cut like he was like sort of like slot like yeah he was killed like in in the I think he was being um he was he was getting his hair cut and the other person sort of like slide his his throat open wow um so so these these people yeah the ones that died died tragically so um yeah again if I don't recall incorrectly so um yeah well that's, so that's it, I'm sure I'm sure there's yeah there's this you know energy built there that perhaps is not, you know, sort of like a positive energy, but sort of like that negative, you know, vibe that, you know, I'm sure is there. When I went right. there, again, like you gotta remember, this is, you know, it was throughout the day, we were just, you know, there, you know, I was really excited and then just, you know, seeing Alcatraz again, as I mentioned, I had been there like three or four times before. So um, it was more just curious to see what Francesco was saying. Right. Um, and just paying attention to, to how she was operating the, uh, the equipment. I thought right. that was pretty cool. And it, it's an interesting perspective what you mentioned as far as those dark energies or, you know, for, from these stories that, you know, throughout the tour that they shared with you that how, you know, the awful gruesome way that these people have died, um, which probably yeah. has left these 
spirits or just this dark energies lingering in that confined to that island. Um, it's an interesting perspective, you know, seeing Francesca, you know, work her devices that are picking up these energies. And what I enjoy most from what you're sharing with us is uh, you've actually been to Alcatraz, you know, more than once. So I have to ask you, what is something that perhaps stands out to you or, or a good memory that you have that you were, that it kind of took you back and probably left you in shock? Like, you know, what can you share with us that something like a memory that stands out to you from the times you visited? Yeah, absolutely. It was the, I still remember, um, it was one of the blocks, I believe it was block D where the other uh, solitary confinement um, area was. So these were really tiny cells that had um, uh, the floors, the walls, the ceiling, everything was steel. Mm -hmm. And so it was a hallway on one side, you know, all the solitary confinement uh, cells were there. And right in front of that, they had, they had windows. But one of the things, one of the things um, uh, in, in the Bay Area in San Francisco is, you know, at night it gets really cold and windy. So I remember in one of the tours, you know, they, they were saying that, well, this one's, this cells were the, were the ones where like really, you know, people that wasn't behaving, they were, they were put there. Um, and then the guards, sometimes if they, they wouldn't be quiet or if they would be making noise, they would leave the, uh, the windows open. So all that cold would get inside. And since the cells had everything around the inside of them were, um, was um, steel, it would get super cold. So it would be impossible to sleep. Wow. And, and one of the things I know they, they mentioned was they were supposed to be there no more than, than 24 hours, but there were people there that uh, stayed, you know, like I think the one person was like 14 days. Wow. Um, so just imagine like, yeah, you just being in that, not being able to, to sleep because it's too cold, not being able to rest um, and just, you know, it's just day by day. Just, I remember them saying that, you know, one people that came out of, of that cell said like, you know, that person spent 24 hours, but he said it felt like eternity wow. because it was like that, you know, yeah, every minute it's kind of like, you know, it takes an hour to go every minute. So um, that was the, um, that was kind of like one of, you know, the, the things that, it, and, 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 you know, I believe they said that the first time I went. So the other times that I went, it was kind of like, oh, let's go get, you know, let's go and see again, you know, block D, I believe it was. Um, right. And just take a moment. And, and when you go inside these cells, um, th there's, you know, it felt super tiny. I believe I'm a six foot one, but I'm sure the ceiling couldn't be more than seven, seven feet uh, tall. Wow. Um, so everything feels really kind of like claustrophobic, uh, uh, right. claustrophobic a little bit. So it was, um, yeah, that was kind of like the, the areas in Alcatraz that sort of like, you know, impacted me the most. Um, right. No, that's because definitely. the way it was kind of like. Yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine how these prisoners did. And, and you know, like you're saying, you know, being there, you know, for those who got the most or the worst pun punishment to be there confined to that small space for 14 days, that's crazy. Yep. I can imagine the psychological trauma of, you know, not being able to sleep and, you know, it must have been awful. Now, I know when I, I spoke with Francesca, she had shared with me that during this investigation with the whole group, you decided to divert from the group and you wanted to do what we were more intrigued in doing the audio tour instead. How, how, does that, uh, how did that work out for you? No, it was, it was great. I really liked the, uh, like that, uh, the audio, uh, audio tour because you go through, you know, this path and they explain you like everything, right? So okay. you go to the different, different areas um, I still remember that, you know, I got to this room and they, you know, the, 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 the person talking on, over the, uh, the, the audio said, okay, this, you're standing in the most, uh, in the most dangerous room in the entire prison. And I remember looking around and it just seemed like a really big room with sort of like a kitchen at the end. Mm. And then the person said, this was the dining room. And, you know, everyone was there at the same time eating. So that was that that that's why it was the most dangerous you know room because you had every you know every single you know prisoner there at the same time eating. Um, so so you know guards were in high alert because they needed to pay attention that nothing you know would happen and no fight will break, will, you know break up. 
So um, yeah, um, and then of course you know the 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 tour will take you to this cell where where you know uh, the cell that shows where you know it's believed that you know the prisoners escaped. This I believe there were like three people that escaped and the the, the bodies were never found. Um, so it you know we don't know what happened to them. One of the things that you got to remember is um, the way the where the island is. The island is like a, it's a little bit more than a mile from from San Francisco, um, and surrounded the area. Um, current the uh, the ocean. The current is really strong, and it pushes you out uh, through the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, so so you're sort of like if you need to swim, you got to swim for more than a mile. The wow. water is extremely cold. Um, and you're actually swimming against the current, which makes it even hotter. Right. Um, so that's why, like the you know, everyone said it, it is really impossible to uh, to to escape uh, right. the island. Uh, one of the other thing is um, um, it when I was when I was living there because I lived in Berkeley for ten years. Uh, Berkeley is a city near San Francisco. Um, they they I heard it from different people that uh, um, great shark, um, um, uh, great white sharks. Mm -hmm. They um, they breed they breed underneath the bridge, and they've been uh, they they've they've seen um, um, there's a lot of seals also in that area as well, and they've seen um, white white sharks uh, the great white shark eating seals, so so <laughs> besides the the right. cold water, you know the distance from from San Francisco um, and the current plus sharks makes it you know extremely right. difficult for anyone to have survived. Um, so again, it, you know, that gives a little bit more of that sort of like, you know, you know, that thing that, oh yeah, let's know a little bit more of, you know, about Alcatraz and, and let's right. go there. And since I was, I was living in Berkeley, it was, uh, it was really easy for me to take the train and go to San Francisco and from there, like take a ferry and, and go to, uh, go to the island. Now, since you've been there for a couple of times, if given the opportunity, would you do a tour of Alcatraz at night? Well, the, yeah, well, it's funny because I asked, one of the times I asked, I asked the question to a guard, um, uh, when, uh, I don't know if, if they're called guards, but to, uh, I believe the, uh, I believe the, um, um, that's now a national park. So right. um, there have just, I don't know if the, ter the term is rangers, I don't really know, but well, someone was <clears throat> working there, was there. <clears throat> so I asked, um, hey, um, you know, at night, the thing is like, no one, no one lives in Alcatraz. Right. Everyone after the last tour, um, everyone comes out of the island and no one stays. Um, that's, that's one of the things that no one stays at night there. Um, right. So, so the person that I was asking, like, you know, do you hear, you know, people or, you know, or do you hear noises? And again, because this happens through the day, there's always a lot of people going, you know, inside. Um, the person said that, you know, uh, that, she, that she didn't know that, you know, if, if, if someone had heard anything or like noises or anything, um, you can't go to Alcatraz at night and, and check that. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure that if I go, one of the things that I guess I, I, it, it could be, it could be not true. It's just when you psych yourself about a place and about what you might encounter, I, I think you trick your brain right. and you start hearing noises that perhaps are not there. It just, right. just happened to be the wind. I guess it gets really windy there. Um, so it could be just the wind, um, but you, because you're psyched about what you're you know, about to do and, and you have sort of like a double intention of going, right. um, you, you might just, correct. Yeah, that's interesting. And you know, hearing Francesca's perspective of capturing some of these sounds and some of the movements that she captured with her cameras and some of the yeah. uh, 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 transmissions she picked up with the sound that were sensitive to her um, devices that were meant for these uh, scoutings of you know paranormal activity. Oh, absolutely! I remember like um, her devices were were reading something because I you know I remember I kept asking like, hey, so what is that sound supposed to be? Right. And then if, you know, if I don't remember incorrectly, she would say, no, she's, you know, this is picking up something. So something, something might be, you know, going around here. Um, but again, it, it wasn't, it wasn't everywhere. It was just in certain locations. And wow. if I don't recall incorrectly, these locations were, were, you know, like, you know, the bad, 
areas where you know people had died there. Um, so I'm sure I'm sure there's a correlation between you know the readings and perhaps where we were. Um, right. Now, so yeah, it's 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 very much sounds like you're very open minded to understanding the deep history. Um, you know, gathering as much knowledge and as much facts um, in these visitations that you've had over the course of, uh, uh, you know, the seven years while you lived in San Francisco and going with Francesca to these missions. Now, did you ever feel that there may have been, or not just from your first, second, or the third time, anything uh, like a spirit that has attached to you or any other kind of like um, any negative energy? Did you ever feel that? No. After, after you left the island? But again, before, yeah, b before I went with Francesca, you know, every time that I was there, it was, I was never thinking about, you know, about that. I think, right. I guess, well, in California, and, and let me just say this, in, in San Jose, um, San Jose, California, there is the, uh, the Winchester uh, Mystery um, House. I don't know if you heard of it. It's just, uh, you know, the, I guess the um, the arm, the Winchester uh, arm uh, um, manufacturer, the one with the rifles, um, the widow had a had a house um, in San Jose, and um, it, the I believe now like the house is is a uh, is a historic la uh, landmark, um, yeah. and 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 that house um, has has it, it was it was built in such a way that. You know, it was a little bit, you know, like unusual the way it got built because, you know, when you go inside, you had staircases that lead to no nowhere, and then you had you had windows that were not actually a window. When you open, it would be another wall. Hmm. And I remember that they said that it's believed that um, the widow was, uh, you know, uh, she wanted to um, sort of like um, um, confuse the ghosts in the house. Um, so that's why she sort of like built all this, you know, uh, you know, the, this house in such a, a, a particular way. way. Right. Yeah. The, yeah. So it's the, yeah, the Winchester house. Um, and I believe that the name of the lady was Sarah, you know, um, uh, well, Winchester. And I know, I know her, um, the husband died um, and, and she had a, a child, I believe. And the child also died when she was like only, only like 10, 10 or 12 years old. Uh, and I remember when I went to do that tour, they actually said that they've they've heard they've heard like people doing the tour. They said like, yeah, I've heard voices. Wow. You get to rooms and and things will start moving. Really, so uh, there's more activity in that in that setting. In more so than that that in, correct, and and it could be again like it could be perhaps that Alcatraz is such a you know, uh, it, it's a ch such a you know it, the facility itself is huge. Um, well, it, it's big, it's big, and when you go there, um, you know, like you don't go to like tiny little, you know, places. Everything's sort of like open, so you know, and and all the places that you go are just, you know, they're they're marked. It's sort of like you follow like a path. Right. So perhaps you don't get to see, you know, I I, I believe like one of the buildings had sort of like a basement. I believe it was called like the Citadel. And, and they had, you know, like these tiny little cells that they also put people there, but it's no longer open to the general public. Wow. So, okay. so I'm sure that if if you sort of like if you go there, and you go there at night again, you know, to all these places that are more sort of like, you know, hidden from the general right. public, you might you might you know sort of like experience something different. Of course. Of course. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure they're hidden because you know they they don't want to show certain things that perhaps might be a little bit disturbing for for some people right right well this is a this has been a great experience getting to talk to you and you've given us your feedback about your experiences over at alcatraz um thank you so much for coming on board here and sharing this with our audience i really do appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule uh to come on here and uh join us in another episode of uh, supernatural eyes so thank you so much dan there's anything else you want to leave our viewers with any other any other comments that uh, we missed? No, I think it was you know I think I said pretty much you know it, it happened a long time ago, but it was right. uh, yeah it, it was an enjoyable experience for sure. Um, 
again, if you go, as you mentioned, if you go with, with an open mind and, right. and I was really intrigued by what Francesca was, was, uh, was doing, I, you know, before Francesca had never met someone who was actually into it. So, you know, as I mentioned, it was, it was, it was really curious about the equipment and how it worked right. and how it could be calibrated and the kind of readings. And, and I remember asking Francesca just to just double check the reading. I, I would say like, could you point on that section? Let's go and see right. what, you know, what, what the readings are on that area. Right. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a good experience for sure. Awesome. An interesting well, experience. Yep. I love that. Well, now thank you so much for taking the time. We'll catch us up in the next episode. Okay. Okay. Sounds good, man. Take care. Thank Bye. So Bye-bye. Things that I can't bear